So I've just arrived in Yorkshire and it's freezing. I've just got out the car to pay the car park and there's a really cold wind. I've had my t-shirt on all the way here. And luckily I just popped my jacket on just to go down to the uh, honesty box thing where you pay for your car parking. And uh, yeah, it's really cold. So actually I feel like I just want to, I just want to get to the campsite and pitch up actually so I can get warm with my stove. But, um, but no. We are here and we're at a place where there is a druid's temple and I've literally driven up from Nottingham and just pulled in here so um, just wishing that the sun would come out and the wind would drop a little bit but this is what we've got, the sunny UK. So anyway, um, this is our weekend adventure. We've got a couple of nights in Yorkshire. I've not really made any plans. Everything's been so up in the air lately um, and I've been watching the weather forecast. This was supposed to be a lot nicer weather this weekend here, but uh, it's changed. So anyway, I've come to what I thought would be the best place and I've bought the new hot tent and the stove because although we are now middle of April, yes, it is still quite chilly and I'm quite nesh when it comes to the great outdoors I like to be warm so we're actually going to be doing a bit more sort of glamping rather than camping tonight and I will show you what I mean by that later we've come to see the Druids temple first of all for a little walk and then we're going to head out to the campsite pitch up and get ourselves settled in got loads of good stuff to show you this weekend so I hope you stay along for the journey if you haven't already met me, my name's Lilu and I go on solo adventures all around the UK from hiking, car camping, hot tent camping, wild camping, camper vanning, you name it. I'm trying to give it all a go and show you all the best places to visit in the UK. Anyway, let's get into the video. at the state of my trainers from the walk at um, so I've just walked up and I found that people can apparently park for free just there even though it says no parking further up it actually says you can park there so that's a bit naughty isn't it anyway I've had a look at the visitor board and there are different routes to take you can either go on several uh, different cycle routes and you can also walk it like I'm doing. It's only a short walk from the car park to get to the Druids Temple which for me is quite surprising. I thought there'd be a bit more of a substantial walk to get there. As usual I come on a weekend and there's lots of little kids playing on the temple but if I just turn the camera around you can see in the distance there it is. Um, quite underwhelming. I'm actually quite disappointed because obviously you see all the social media posts about it and the Instagrammable photos and stuff and it looks amazing and it looks like it's quite hidden away but actually it was literally just a couple of hundred yards from the car park and it's there. Um, so yeah, anyway, I'm going to have a look around. There's not actually much to see by the looks of it. It's a nice place to walk but it does say all over that it's part of the estate and it's private property and there's no filming allowed and stuff like that so um, yeah, shame really, but um, anyway, here we are, let's have a look around. William Danby was an eccentric 19th century country squire and the owner of Swinton Park. Danby was inspired by the stone circle of Stonehenge, which leading antiquarians incorrectly assumed that it had been created by the Druids of the Celtic Britain. He decided to create his own Druids temple, modelled loosely on Stonehenge. It's really muddy again, really boggy, and there's kids everywhere. Again, I don't recommend coming at the weekend.
Danby hired unemployed workmen and paid them one shilling a day to create the fanciful folly based on the circle of standing stones. Danby also hired a hermit to live in the tomb for seven years. The hermit was instructed to remain mute and let his hair and beard grow. The successful hermit lasted only four years in his role, and it was rumoured that the requirements of the job sent him insane. Well, my verdict on the place is quite disappointing. Um, it isn't a prehistoric site anyway. It is a folly. Um, and I'll give you some more history on it in this video when I edit it, but um, it's a shame because all the trees are being felled as well. There's a lot of work going on, so there's a lot of new trees being planted, but it all just looks a bit messy, really, as well as the mud that you can see I'm having to walk through again, so at least I didn't bother cleaning my trainers. But um, anyway, I'm gonna, I've had a bit of a walk, so I'm gonna head back to the car. So yeah, I'm thinking of just heading towards the campsite, and actually, getting pitched up so I can just chill out at camp and that's uh, that's a first for me because normally I just use base camp as literally that you know just a, a shelter overnight and then pack up and go but actually quite looking forward to setting this tent up and getting some food on and you know cooking on the stove and stuff so I'm back in the car and I decided before I go anywhere I'm going to make myself a sandwich um, so I'm having a little in-car picnic because it's a bit it's a bit drafty outside um, and luckily because the car has got everything in it. Um, I am able to um, do a little bit of a halfway car camp, which is quite nice. So I'm going to have something to eat and then um, I'm going to decide where to go next. So I've arrived at camp and it's a big sheep farm <laughs> and the field looks really muddy. I've just had to drive into it with the car. I dread to think what my wheels look like. I could feel it slipping and sliding as I went over the field, but really nice owner Derek welcomed me in and uh, it's £10 a night and it's called the Century Circle Camping near North Allerton so uh, I'm just looking at the, the sheep um, there's two or three campers here in tents so I've just sort of I've come away from them I'm gonna actually pitch my tent facing the sheep <laughs> why not um, but yeah it's looking very wet I don't know if the tent camping was the best idea really but um, but never mind um, anyway, let me show you the sheep. So these are going to be my neighbours. Sadly, I can't see any lambs. Um, but there is actually a, a natural stone circle, like up that way somewhere as well. So, And there's a few camping pods as well, and there's a toilet block and stuff. So it's all good. I've got a pitch up now in front of people, and I've never pitched this tent before, so I'm a little bit apprehensive. <laughs> Anyway, let's get cracking. Well, this is a different tent to the last hot tent that I had. This is actually the Pommelly Dome 4X Pro. What is it? I'm in a different hot tent. It looks the same or very similar to the uh, Dome X4 that I used back in October. This is the Pommelly Dome X4 Pro, so it's slightly different. There's more ventilation on it for starters. I could not pitch it on my own. It was really difficult to the point where some a couple of nice campers that were watching from the top of the field, they gave me a few minutes to struggle on my own and then they really kindly came over and helped pitch the tent. It took three of us to do it. Was, it was really tough. Um, once you got the poles in, to actually flex them to get them into the, into the, uh, the pegs, I couldn't do it on my own. So I don't know what I did wrong there, but thank goodness they came to help me. Um, I was absolutely exhausted by doing that. So thank you to Jeanette and your husband for coming over to uh, to rescue me. And they didn't laugh at me, bless them. Um, so I've just basically brought everything else in and uh, I'm gonna get myself set up and then I'll show you my new home. So I'm just finishing off and I'm gonna put my fairy lights up. And I'm actually glad that I'm staying here two nights. I don't normally stay in one place um, more than one night. But actually I'm quite excited to set up home here and literally just have two more days of relaxation. Life has been a bit tough over the last couple of weeks. Um, so I've had to make a lot of very critical decisions as to what I'm doing in my future. It's been good, it's all positive, but um, 
yeah, it was quite stressful at one point just trying to make the right decision and really think, you know, what I want to do. Anyway, for now, I'm going to try and hang these up. <laughs> Look at that beautiful sunshine we've got. Perfect British summertime weather. And the biggest difference with this one in the last tent is it's got windows. The other tent I had didn't have these windows. So apart from that, I believe it's exactly the same. Um, I think that's different as well. I think the top of it's different. It's got like a cap on it. So I've had to make an X where the stove jack goes. And, uh, So let me show you indoors. I'm just going to put my slippers on. There we go. This is the baker stove that I used uh, probably about six months ago now. I've only used it once and um, I was really impressed with it. So that's where the wood goes. And then in here is where you can, you can bake. And then once that's on top there, you can actually cook on the top here as well. And this one's really posh because it's got a water tank, which I find really, really helpful. But this time, I'm not going to make any mistakes like I did in the last video. This time I've come prepared. I've got some gauntlets. I'm not going to be burning my fingers. And I've also got these <laughs> because I didn't have any last time and I really struggled. So I'm all prepared to cook some amazing food tonight. I've got a few tricks up my sleeve to make this an absolutely luxurious camp tonight. I probably won't even want to get up in the morning. Um, and as you can see, this tent has the windows. So straight away, it's much better airflow, much better ventilation. And also I can see what's going on on the campsite. So I'm actually really pleased with that. I do believe, actually, I've just spied, because I've never used this tent before, but I do believe we have more windows. So that's actually amazing in the summertime because you're not going to boil alive in here. It's really, really windy today actually, so I'm getting a bit blown to pieces. But yeah, I really like that because obviously the door also has the mesh front as well. So the whole front of it could be open. You have got two doors as well, just like the other tent on the back. So it is like a six panel dome and three of those panels are doors and you can escape out the back of the inner tent as well through one of those doors because it's the uh, inner tent is also double doored so it's nice and safe um, i'm using a fireproof ground sheet that came as an accessory to the tent and this inner tent is also an additional extra so actually so far so good up above me is my storage net and another addition since i last uh, had the camp is carbon monoxide alarm <laughs> didn't have one last time i've got my silver ant frying pan and big big pot i've not used the big pot yet um, but it's a really good size i've also got my wild camping pot that's the one that goes everywhere with me to make hot drinks with and then you might see just behind me i've got a chi free air fryer <laughs> yes i've brought an air fryer with me now in order to obviously have electric i'm going to need some sort of power so today i've also bought with me this one so this is the all powers power station and it actually comes with a solar panel which is still in the car at the moment because um well i thought it was going to rain it actually looks like we might get some uh, solar energy so i'll get that later as well and pop it outside it is actually charged up to 100 percent at the moment but once i start using bits and pieces then obviously it will wear down and then i can charge it up again so solar panel is really really useful so I've got this power station I've also got another power station in there which I'll show you later and that is for charging my drone my cameras and all those sort of things as well so I've got two different power stations and um, yeah an air fryer so we will be having proper luxury tonight right let's go to the bedroom So just to give you an idea of how much space is just in the inner tent alone, that's my Trekology UL80 um, sleep mat um, with my All Pro um, Hush sleeping bag, and it's a quite a big bed to be quite honest. Um, and you can see you can easily fit two people in here and have extra room for storage. 
look how much space there is. So it's really, really good. So at the back here, got a little bit of ventilation going off. And here is where your emergency exit is. So you've got another door there and one on here as well. So you can just unzip this and get out the side door if you wanted to. We've also got a little pocket here and this is all vent as well. So there's also a little pocket down here for your phone or whatever. So as you know, I'm quite a fair weather camper and it is only mid-April and although it's quite mild in the daytime, it does get quite, quite cold at night and it's quite windy. So I've brought with me my little electric heated blanket and I'll need this to be plugged into something. So what I've also got is my Afiri power station. Now this one is twice the size of the All Powers one that's going to be running the air fryer. So this one is really good. I actually use it all the time at home. In my bedroom my plug sockets are really far away from the sleeping end of the bed. So I actually use this at night to plug in my phone. You've got a light which is really helpful and then you've got a flashing light and then another flashing light. You can charge your phone and bits in here. Um, this is where you can actually charge it up from the car battery um, and you can also use the normal UK plug. So yeah, I use the Afiri power station quite a lot at home actually and it's really really useful. So yes, we will be having extra luxury in here tonight too. So, um, so that's the sleeping area all set up. I think what we'll do is, because it's now sunny, I might get the solar panel out ready to collect those rays and uh, get me some solar energy. So it's really windy. As you can see, I've got my solar panel set up with my all powers power station because on and off it is quite sunny. This is my view. And uh, this is the campsite that I'm on. It's really basic, but it's got everything you need. There's a toilet block and shower block just behind me. And uh, it's just really peaceful here. I just wish that wind would disappear. So I'm, <laughs> so I'm catching some solar energy at the moment and uh, just really enjoying being in my new little home for the next couple of days. But it is so windy outside. It's a shame because it is actually quite mild, but our wind is so cold. So um, you know what I'm gonna do? I think I'm gonna start doing a little bit of cooking. First of all, I need to put my slippers back on to keep the inner tent nice and clean and also just have an added touch of luxury. So there we go. I've got my, uh, got my slip flops on now. And there we are again. You can see the solar panel working its magic out there. So uh, yeah, that'll be really useful because we're gonna be using some of that power later on with the uh, with the air fryer so another little bit of luxury i bought with me today is this sleeping bag and it's a little down sleeping bag really really light but it also is really good i showed it to you um, in my christmas vlog and it's really good because it's got poppers all the way up so you can actually like wear it with your feet out at the bottom or wear it like a cape i've got so much stuff tonight to make it a really comfortable camp like i say it's going to be more like glamping than camping that's the idea anyway It's a little bit windy. <laughs> Good job we put the guy lines in as well as the big tent pegs and the guy actually used his mallet to get the tent pegs in for me. I was thinking I could probably get away without the guy lines but the wind is really gusting at the moment. I've shut all the, uh, I've shut all the windows. <laughs> I feel like I'm a wizard of ozing at the moment but um, it's all good, it's all good. It's still sun shining still sun shining um, but yeah it is windy it is so cozy in here actually I'm loving it having a great time I'm not even doing anything I'm literally just sat in a tent but I'm just having a really good time I feel like a little girl in her Wendy house um, just a word of warning though when it's windy it's probably best not to uh, put your stuff up there because uh, it, it kind of bounces and I had a Swiss army knife uh, flying flying down on me luckily it missed but um, all the things have kind of moved um, because it, it's bouncing around with the wind. So that was a bit scary, but you live and learn, don't you? 
you know what I'm so I think I'm so mentally drained from the last two weeks of stress that uh, I just feel really tired all the time at the moment so it's really good to come here and switch off from all the uh, negativity I've also got a new crystal I don't know whether you're into crystals or not I'm I'm not massively but this one I've been I've had my eye on for a while this is a, a stone called malachite and it gets rid of all the negative toxic people in your life even if it's family oh yes you need to watch yourselves because wearing this has such a powerful energy that it will rid me of all those nasty nasty people in my life hopefully I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say but people who know me will know I'm thinking of a certain person I can't say I can't say their name but their name rhymes with squeal and uh, let's hope I get rid of him because uh, he needs to go but anyway um, on to more positive things uh, as I said I'm going to um, load this stove up although in the wind it is rocking and rolling all over the place maybe it's not best I don't know is it a good idea to light the stove on a windy day will it get backflow will I get smoked out like a kipper I don't know really pleased to see that I've actually finally got the uh, the solar panel working um, it's in the sunshine even though it's not particularly warm there is a lot of solar energy out there and just in front you can see there is the all powers power station and it's quite happy there, chugging away filling up on all the vital energy so um, yeah everything's working really good I'm so glad I bought my slippers I just feel like it's just a next level comfort might make something to eat is there a special way to put the kindling in like you know does it matter how you put it in I'm not sure so I'm just gonna to put it in and make sure there's like plenty of airflow I reckon so sort of stack it a bit like um, a bit like a teepee really I guess like that so building up all the little bits of wood oh I forgot I haven't shown you my new toy meet roughneck this is my new hatchet and when I need to cut some wood up I obviously don't need to cut up my kindling I'm going to be using my new hatchet, so uh, I've had a little go already. I quite enjoy it, actually. So um, obviously I will go outside for that. I'm not going to be cutting wood up in here. Um, but I have already had a little go, and I've, I've cut some of these logs are really, really big. So um, I've cut them into smaller bits, and then obviously I've got the bigger ones for a longer burn. But yeah, roughneck, we're buddies now. It's just started to rain just as I was deciding to close that door because I was starting to get a bit chilly. The heavens have just opened. Woo! It's really drafty as well with all the vents open at the moment. It's really windy. So I've got the main windows are now shut, including the door, but I do still have the vents on the three panels open to get the, get the airflow. Start again. To get the airflow through. Um, there's enough airflow in here, definitely, to uh, to not die tonight. Um, so I'm going to start the stove up shortly. Um, I've just been chilling out, basically, listening to some music and stuff. And, uh, oh, yeah, time to get warmed up, I think. Ooh. I know I've only got a t-shirt on, but we're gonna get warm soon, hopefully. Oh, let's take these off before we set fire to ourselves. Pop that on. Hey. Probably how windy and rainy it is.
going to make myself a hot chocolate. I find these little galaxy ones just ideal for camping. They're quick and easy, just the right amount. So that's what I'll be using. Ready. Apologies, everything's wobbling around. We've got one of these tonight. It's a smoky tomato and mozzarella flatbread. Taste the difference. Luxury all the way tonight with a nice juicy ribeye steak. So I've got my hot chocolate. Ironically, it's now too hot. So I've got that going. The fire's going. I think I'm going to cook dinner now um, while it's all nice and toasty roasty. I'm starving anyway. I'm not going to burn myself tonight. So let's just open that oven up. Yeah, that's fine. Let's pop this flatbread on the tray. I should have got the tray out earlier. I've done this all completely backwards, but I'm going to pop the flatbread in the oven. I don't want to knock the hot chocolate over. There we go. And here we are. I've got a nice beef ribeye steak. I brought my Ridge Monkey. And this I first used when I went to the Wales campervan trip last June and I found it really, really good. So I'm going to pop that on there. I'm going to open up my ribeye. You've got to love that sound, haven't you? Right. As you can see, I've opened up my window again because it's really warm in here. Um, it is really drafty, but if I open up one side, I'm hoping it won't just be a complete rude draft. Um, and also, look, we've got some sunshine out there. Who are these people? Oh my god, no! Overlanders, why are they here? Oh no. No, 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 no. Why? Ah. Hi guys. I'm going to close this window again, I think. Whoop. So I've opened up this window instead. And the sun is blinding, it's beautiful. I can't believe we've now got about 50 overlanders coming to camp. <sighs> so much for peace and quiet tonight. I mean, can they actually get any closer? <sighs> Never mind. We'll, uh, we'll have the view on this side. <laughs> oh dear. Oh well. So just quickly while the steak is uh, frying. If you're a new subscriber, then welcome. Welcome. This is the kind of thing we do at this channel. We just chill out together and we do all sorts of adventures, whether it's hiking or camping, wild camping, caravanning, car camping, 
I try and do lots of different things but also show you really cool places in the UK. So welcome to the channel and thank you for subscribing. How about that? Okay, the flatbread's a little bit burnt. <laughs> Now this is the life. So when you're camping, what are your favourite foods? What do you take with you when you go wild camping? But also when you've got a static setup like this, where you're going to be staying for one or two nights or, or more, what are your go-to meals? Because I love a steak and a flatbread, and I also have my cheap and cheerful corned beef, mashed potato and veg. Might be on the menu tomorrow. A lot of people, when they go wild camping, they take noodles, like super noodles and stuff, which I do have as extra snacks and things, but I don't find them filling at all. So yeah, let me know in the comments what kind of thing you would eat when you come to a campsite like this, quite a basic campsite, or if you're going wild camping, because I need some ideas for this summer. I am stuffed. <laughs> and I'm so sleepy. And even though I've got the front door open, with the warmth from the last bit of the, uh, the burning embers of the stove, I'm quite warm actually. So uh, I'm just thinking, do I have a little nap? No, that's lazy. Uh, I'm going to wait for sunset and then I'm going to go up to the stone sentry circle because it's on the top of the hill and we can see how good the views are. But we've got a while until that point. So yeah, I thought I'd have a little nap, just a little nap, just while I'm waiting for sunset let my food digest it's so nice just to i mean it's not very peaceful here the road's noisy and those overlanders are really noisy as well chatting and laughing and having a good time um so yeah it's not completely peaceful but at the same time it's just nice to nice just to get away from everything and everyone um that's involved in my home life uh, and just have a break it's gone really cold and it's about eight o'clock I haven't gone up to the stone circle, I was too tired, I just can't be bothered really. So I have sat and made some plans for tomorrow and I've got a really beautiful walk for us to go on. I'm really quite excited about that. But what I am going to do is I'm going to relight the stove and get it warmed up in here because it's gone really really cold. Uh, the wind seems to have dropped but there's still a little bit of freezing cold draft coming in so uh, yeah let's get this fire going again. Okay, so I'm just going to place some more of these fire lighters in there and then build up the kindling. Oh, it's really cold. I don't know how people camp in the winter. I don't think I'm strong enough for that. Freezing. It's not even cold. I don't think it's that cold. I think it's just I'm tired. So, this one. Push that underneath so it lights the other one.
So, I'm currently trying to cook super noodles in the pot above the stove. But it's a bit dark in here and I can't see very well what I'm doing. Um, it's also a, a bit hot and steamy. <laughs> Finally got them cooked. <laughs> I managed to steam off the water. I mean, they're really hot still. I don't know if you can see how hot they are, but they cook quite well. So I'm just going to let them cool down a little bit. So guys, I'm going to say good night and I will see you in the morning for the next adventure. As I say, we've got a nice hike and I'm hoping it's not going to be too muddy and wet, but we'll go anyway and see what we find. So thank you for watching. Welcome to all the new subscribers. And if you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and a comment and let me know what you normally eat when you go camping. See you on the next one.